Hey everybody, it's Sunday, so it's time for story time. Um, I have with me a fancy mouse. Now you're probably asking yourself, what's the difference between a regular mouse versus a fancy mouse? And for those of you who shop at the store, you're probably also used to seeing feeder mice. Um, well, they all are technically mice, they are raised for different reasons. So a mouse <clears throat> that you might find in your house is called a field mouse. Uh, typically they're gray. Uh, they're very, very fast. They tend to get into very small spaces, and most of the time they're just scavenging for food. Uh, when we have feeder mice, more often than not, they're a lab mouse that's uh, been raised to be a feeder. They're the ones that you usually see that are white, and more often than not, albino. Uh, when we talk about a fancy mouse, we're talking about ones that have different colorizations than what we would see on field mice or on feeder mice. So this little one is brown, blonde, and even has some specks of gray and black in it. Now, mice are actually pretty cool animals when you think about it. I know sometimes, especially in the pet trade, we tend to just think of them as sometimes food, um, and they are the basis for a lot of ecosystems, but mice serve a very, very important purpose in the ecosystem. Mice distribute out uh, seeds and pollen. Since the majority of mice like eating different types of plants and seeds, they're gonna be uh, gathering up as many as they can and bringing them around to their nest and eventually when they pass through their system and pass out, they can actually kind of replant some stuff. And because they're rooting around finding those things, they get their fur covered in all kinds of different types of pollens and seeds. And so they spread those wherever they go. So mice form a very, very important relationship with their environment because they're helping pollinate but at the same time also being the basis of a food system. Uh, so we call these food webs and food chains. So a food chain starts out with the most simplest thing, which is usually plants. And then we have something that eats the plants like an insect. And then we have something like a rodent that will eat the insect. And then that goes on and on and on for like birds, snakes, and larger mammals. And then something larger eats them, something larger eats them, and it moves on and on and on. That's how a food chain works. A food web is how all those things interact with one another. So a mouse can actually eat multiple things. They're not just seed and nut eaters, but they also will eat lots of insects. Um, and then they're also their food for lots of different animals. And then that's how the web works together. So when we have them as fancy mice, they tend to be pretty used to human interaction, uh, which means they can be used to being pet. Like this one is just kind of hunkering down and enjoying its head being lightly stroked um, and also just exploring. So we actually sell fancy mice here at the store. Um, they can make a really good first pet uh, because they're pretty low key. Uh, you just gotta keep up on cleaning with them just like we do any other animal. Especially when we give them a wheel to run on, they typically go to the bathroom a lot when they run. So that wheel needs to be cleaned quite often. But once they get used to you, they actually become very, very nice animals. Now reason I'm using a mouse today is not only because she cute, but also we're going to be reading a book today that is called Creep, Leap, Crunch, A Food Chain Story. Uh, this is a book by Jody Jensen Schaefer and Christopher Silas Neal, and it talks about how a food chain works. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on this book. Um, I'll actually try to hold the mouse up for you guys to see, or maybe she'll sit on my front. It's not often I use an animal this small, it gets kind of hard to see on camera. But we'll go ahead and we will do our best. So Creep, Leap, Crunch, a food chain story. There was a blue sky with a bright shining sun, a glorious life-giving fiery sun. The day had begun. There was a huge forest of grasses and trees that blew in the cool of a blustery breeze. The plants made their food with the help of the sun, the glorious life-giving fiery sun. The day had begun. There was a quick cricket awake in the grass. That cricket was fast, he nibbled sweet grass. The cricket much grass far beneath the tall trees that blew in the cool of a blustery breeze. The plants made their food with the help of the sun, the glorious life-giving fiery sun. The day had begun. There was a brown deer mouse that spied the quick cricket. From out of his thicket, he pounced on that cricket. The mouse from the thicket gobbled the cricket. The cricket munched grass far beneath the tall trees that blew in the cool, blustery breeze. The plants made their food with the help of the sun, the glorious life-giving fiery sun. The day had begun. There was a red milk snake that spotted the mouse. He slid from his house and he sprang at that mouse. 
The snake slid and slithered and swallowed the mouse. The mouse from the thicket gobbled the cricket. The cricket munched grass far beneath the tall trees that blew in the cool of a blustery breeze. The plants made their food with the help of the sun, the glorious, life-giving, fiery sun. The day was half done. There was a red hawk peering down at the snake. Make no mistake, he scooped up that snake. The fast-diving hawk swooped down on the snake. The snake slid and slithered and swallowed the mouse. The mouse from the thicket gobbled the cricket. The cricket munched grass far beneath the tall trees that blew in the cool of a blustery breeze. The plants made their food with the help of the sun, the glorious, life-giving, fiery sun. The day was half done. There was a red fox that trapped the red hawk. He crept off a rock and he cornered that hawk. The creeping red fox sneaked up on the hawk. Make them a snake, the hawk caught the snake. The snake slid and slithered and swallowed the mouse. The mouse from the thicket gobbled the cricket. The cricket munched grass far beneath the tall trees that blew in the cool of a blustery breeze. The plants made their food with the help of the sun, the glorious life-giving fiery sun. The day was half done. There was a black bear that tracked down the fox. Sleepy but hungry, she found that red fox. The bear sniffed the air and she followed the fox. The creeping red fox sneaked up on the hawk. Make no mistake, the hawk caught the snake. The snake slid and slithered and swallowed the mouse. The mouse from the thicket gobbled the cricket. The cricket munched grass far beneath the tall trees that blew in the cool of a blustery breeze. The plants made their food with the help of the sun, the glorious life-giving slow-sinking sun. The day was now done. But some days, The crickets that fast hops away from the mouse. The pouncing brown mouse scrambles past the red snake. The slithery snake slides beneath the swift hawk. Hello. The swooping red hawk zooms above the red fox. The bushy-tailed fox sneaks around the black bear. And the hungry black bear munches flowers and seeds, all that she needs. The end. And in the back, it tells us exactly what a food chain is, along with photosynthesis, producers, consumers, talks about different types of forests. So this is a great book that you can pick up at the Capital Area District Library that talks about how a food chain works. So, a really, really easy and simple way to learn how all these animals are important, from the blades of grass to the cute little mice that may run around and try eating the crickets or eating the seeds, all the way to the big old black bear. So, I hope you guys had fun learning about fancy mice, and I hope you had fun with our book, Creep Leap Crunch. We'll see you guys next time.